For the past couple of nights, there have been ongoing protests and clashes with police in Los Angeles as the police try to clear out a homeless camp. There are some people on social media saying, thank you for giving us back our park. And many on the left are saying it's a lawful assembly. This brings up some really interesting questions. The people who are down here peacefully assembling have a First Amendment right to peacefully assemble. It's interesting where we draw that line. And so I asked myself, who would you agree with in this regard? The police clearing out this homeless camp and these protesters and even arresting journalists in the process, tweeting that journalists have no specific rights and they must disperse as well. Or do you support the protesters and the First Amendment right to peaceably assemble? The problem, I suppose, that's affecting us culturally is the autonomous zones. And when you see these homeless camps being set up and far left activists coming in and occupying these spaces, there is a reasonable fear, well, that the far left could set up something like we saw in Minneapolis or like we are seeing in Minneapolis, where now we're hearing the FBI to monitor Minneapolis autonomous zone in George Floyd Square amid Derek Chauvin trial. So this was last week we learned this. Now we are seeing these riots and it makes for a principal conundrum. Look, I believe in the right to peaceably assemble. And then you have to ask yourself, what happens if you give these people that opportunity? Do we wait until the autonomous zones are set up and then have cops go in with guns to clear them out? Maybe, maybe that's what we have to do. We have to respect that until a line is crossed, you can't just kick someone out of a park. Let me read the story and tell you what's going on. And I'll show you what the police are saying. The Daily Mail reports second night of violent clashes erupt between LAPD and at least 100 protesters trying to stop officers clearing Echo Park of homeless who have overrun the popular beauty spot. They say clashes broke out on Thursday night between officers from the LAPD and at least 100 protesters who were trying to stop police from clearing out Echo Park's homeless encampment. A newly installed fence surrounded the popular LA Park Thursday after authorities moved in to evict residents of the large homeless encampment, despite protests by the people who live there and their supporters. Only a few tents and about a dozen people remained by evening along the grassy banks of Echo Park Lake, where tents had proliferated for months during the coronavirus pandemic, sparking concerns about trash, drugs, and violence. Residents argued that the complaints were overblown and the encampment offered a community setting for people without means to have, who have nowhere else to live. Police gave people until 10.30 p.m. Thursday to leave so that the city could perform what officials said were necessary repairs to the site. But just after 11 p.m., the LAPD announced that an unlawful assembly had been declared in the area of Lemoyne and Park Avenue due to a large crowd who was utilizing high-intensity lights in an attempt to blind officers and prevent them from performing their duties and or defend themselves if needed. Now, that brings us to the first roadblock <clears throat> in these, in, 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 or I should say, the first, I guess, conundrum. Are these people just peacefully standing around and minding their own business as they're allowed to do? Or is this a subversive attempt to disrupt the police and allow people to commit crimes? There are some tough, uh, tough questions here. If the police are coming in to try and deal with drugs, okay, should people have a right to possess drugs if they want? I'm rather libertarian on this one. So I don't necessarily like the idea of the police coming in, disrupting a peaceful gathering, because there are some laws that I quite frankly don't agree with. However, at the same time, we have to recognize that we don't all agree with all the laws and we have to recognize this is a democratic, we have democratic institutions and it's a constitutional republic. What does that mean? Guess what? There's a lot of things I don't like. There's a lot of things they don't like. They don't want me to own guns and well, I'd like to. So I don't like the idea that they can impose these laws banning certain things and I'm rather libertarian, but I still abide by them because I recognize we're trying to live together. So how do you deal with a problem like this when residents are saying there's an abundance of, of homelessness, it's getting worse, and it could potentially lead to one of these autonomous zone type, type situations? I don't know, man. I really don't. I look at peaceful protests. I respect them, and I think they're a good thing for this country. And I'm not a big fan of police coming in and declaring assemblies unlawful when nothing actually has been unlawful. We have this tweet from the LAPD from last night, and they say, The LAPD has declared an unlawful assembly in the area of Lemoyne and Park Avenue due to a large crowd who is utilizing high intensity lights in an attempt to blind officers and prevent them from performing their duties and or defend themselves if needed. A dispersal order has been given at Lemoyne and Park. 
a designated protest zone has been established on Glendale Boulevard north of Park for the Echo Park incident. A media viewing area has been established at the northwest corner of Glendale Boulevard and Park. Sorry, I'm not going to be supporting the cops on that one. You don't get to just decide you can set up a free speech zone and tell me I have to go. I have to go there. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law establishing, you know, the right to freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. From this, we have seen the Supreme Court rule. I have a right to peacefully assemble and the media has a right to report. The police in this instance, I believe, I believe they were in the wrong. Like I said, I think probably what needs to happen is when they actually cross that line and it becomes an autonomous zone and there's rampant lawlessness, you move in. You don't need to say there's an unlawful assembly. You quite literally should come out and if this is the case, say several individuals have weapons or drugs. There you go. I don't like the idea of unlawful assembly and free speech zones. They say penal code section 409. Every person remaining present at the place of a riot, route, or unlawful assembly, after the same has been lawfully warned to disperse, except public officers and persons assisting them in attempting to disperse, the same is guilty of a misdemeanor. As a reminder, members of the media are also to obey the dispersal orders. Members of the media are to use the designated media viewing area at the northwest corner of Glendale and Park. Not interested. Sorry, I think reporters have a right to be there and tell us what's happening. And I think what needs to happen is that the police need to do a better job of working with these with these journalists. That being said, I bring this up as a rather philosophical conundrum, because when I read this story, man, it's tough. I've personally experienced this. I've experienced fake journalists, activists pretending to be journalists, trying to exploit the First Amendment for political gain. They say they're a journalist because they have their phone out. OK, OK. Well, we have to respect acts of journalism. Therein lies the big, I guess, debate. Does someone have a right to peacefully assemble? And at what point should the cops come in? If we allow crimes, misdemeanors and certain uh, and certain criminal statutes to be grounds to declare an un- unlawful assembly, then eventually we erode our First Amendment completely. So I'll give you an example. Let's say right now they say, you know, we're going to pass a law um, banning beanies. That's right. Beanies are no longer allowed. And there's nothing in the Constitution guaranteeing the right to have a beanie. You then have Supreme Court precedent. Unlawful assemblies occur when a peaceful assembly is occurring and someone then engages in a criminal activity. Ah, well, there it is. A couple guys in the crowd are wearing beanies. Therefore, we have an unlawful assembly. That's the problem I have with criminalizing hate speech. And that's the problem I have with this idea that any speech or assembly can be considered unlawful. And that's why I think it's a conundrum, because I I certainly think if someone is instigating violence, we should not tolerate that. But therein lies the big problem. If we say speech that is that is legal is free and speech that violates the law is not, then they can just ban certain speech. And they say it's not a First Amendment violation. It's already precedent that inciting or encouraging someone to commit commit a crime or act of violence is illegal. So there are many people who are free speech absolutists for this reason, saying If you say that your right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, but there are some guns that can be illegal, they're quite literally making laws that infringe your right to bear arms. The same thing is true for this. If we say you can't wear certain clothes, you can't sit in certain areas, you can't do certain things. I understand why we we, we want these laws, but then the police can just be like red socks. There's a guy over there and his socks are red and you know that's a crime. So we're gonna have to break up your protest against the government. I'm certain that the British crown would have implemented many silly laws had they needed any to claim that the revolution was was wrong. And I'm, I'm sure they probably had some stupid and silly laws. So that's the problem, man. At what point do we fear the expansion, the explosion of these these zones into autonomous zones where you get absolutely insane crime? Two nights now of these clashes with police. And there's no real answer other than, I guess, tribalism. Or maybe we just draw that hard line. Maybe it should be so long as the people are there peacefully, it remains. But the moment someone engages in an act of violence, then you come in and you shut it down. What we're seeing in Minneapolis is absolutely insane and it's horrifying. And this is what gives me pause. There was something that happened in New York, okay? They did this cashless bail thing. It was an experiment and it kind of backfired. The idea was for certain crimes, mostly nonviolent offenses, Well, mostly individuals could not be uh, made to pay bail to get out of jail. If the cops arrested you for, say, shoplifting, then they arraign you and then you are free to go. 
I understand this and I kind of agree with it. But hold on. Let's talk about what happened. You see, the idea is I don't like the idea that you're effect, you're essentially held guilty until you can prove your innocence. The state is supposed to treat you as innocent until you're proven guilty. That means if they arrest you and accuse you of committing a crime, they have not proven their case to a jury. Holding you and forcing you to pay money, I believe, is a violation of your rights. Because if you are innocent, if, we, if you're innocent, you don't pay anything. You don't got to pay anything. Therein lies the challenge. We recognize some restrictions because what happened in New York. Well, when we did this, some of these people were caught red handed and the cops are watching them do it. And then they say, well, cashless bail, you're free to go. Those people committed more crimes. And there was one guy who committed, I think, like 30 and he laughed about it. He was like, y'all just keep letting me out. Yeah, they just keep letting him out. But what do you do, man? It is better that 10 guilty persons escape than one innocent person suffer. The last thing I want to see is how is the ins- insanity of the Minneapolis, Minneapolis George Floyd autonomous zone, dis- uh, you know, uh, occur in any other city. But I guess it has to be. These people can assemble if they want to until there's a line we agree on, I suppose. But that's line, that line is probably violence, I guess. Here's what they're reporting about Minneapolis. And we'll go back to the L.A. thing. They say the FBI is now helping Minneapolis police monitor an intersection named George Floyd Square that has since devolved into an autonomous zone. That's brought record levels of violent crime and gun violence to the neighborhood since last May, as local residents and businesses pleaded for help. The intersection of East 38th Street and Chicago Avenue, where a bystander recorded the viral video that showed ex-Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin uh, Chauvin, pressing the knee into Floyd's neck, was first converted into into a memorial and renamed George Floyd Square after his death. But concrete barricades set up by the city last year to protect demonstrators from traffic now act as the barriers to an autonomous zone co-opted by armed individuals declaring law enforcement are unwelcome as gang activity, drug dealing, and gun violence disrupt local business operations. Here's my question. Let's start from a let's 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 start from a perspective of these two stories. How is it that we have the FBI involved in this and the police involved in this and they're not clearing out this autonomous zone? There's violence, people are dying, they don't care. Then how is it that in LA you got a homeless camp and that's priority? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? In these Democrat run cities, I think it's it's fair for many of these Democrats to complain about racially targeted policing or or class based policing, just bigoted policing or whatever. Right. The problem is it's run by Democrats in Minneapolis. You have this neighborhood, which my understanding is it's 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 uh, uh, largely a black neighborhood. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's not. And the police don't care that extremists have taken it over and are killing people. I wonder why. I wonder why it is in New York, for instance, that people complain about stop and frisk and police brutality. But that stuff predominantly happens in black neighborhoods in Democrat run cities. It's almost like these people can't put two and two together. Perhaps the people you're electing are racists. Perhaps your ideology is racist. Now I look to L.A. They're clearing out a homeless camp. Why? Because it offends the delicate sensibilities of wealthy white progressives in affluent areas. Not completely, not always, but you know it, man. There's a story that was uh, in New York a while ago. There's this black cop and he went to Central Park and started issuing fines, tickets to people who are drinking in public, drinking wine uh, uh, for a picnic. So you get these white couples. They go to Central Park. They lay down these blankets. They crack open a bottle of wine and they sit there and they say, ah, what a beautiful day here in Central Park. This black cop shows up and starts handing him tickets saying drinking in public is illegal. Why? He said they come to my neighborhood in in, in Harlem, in the Bronx, and the cops give out tickets to people for drinking a 40 on their own stoop, on the stairs of their own building, hanging out with their friends. I have a 40. I think that's wrong. I think if you're at your house and you want to have a beer, that's fine. So this guy says, I'll go to Central Park. I'll I'll issue tickets. Guess what happened? The city freaked out. They, they shut, they, 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 the, the, the cop got in trouble and I guess they revoked a bunch of these fines. This is racism, in my opinion. Is it an individual who's like a racist who's targeting people? Not necessarily. I think the cop deciding he was going to get back at, you know, the, the, the police in his city by targeting white people who are drinking was racist. The problem with what the police are doing in his neighborhood is that they target these neighborhoods, these poor neighborhoods. And that, my friends, is some kind of institutional racism. Not that there's an individual who is particularly racist, but that the NYPD sends cops into these neighborhoods and they give tickets to people minding their own business in their own homes. Not a fan of that. Ultimately, here's where it comes. 
This is a Democrat city. In fact, New York, the Democrat stronghold. So tell me, please, why is it in Chicago you have racist police? Why is it in New York you have racist police? Why is it in Minneapolis they won't do anything to help this neighborhood? Because maybe it has always been the Democrats who are racists. Maybe they were the ones who were the Confederates. Maybe they were the ones who formed the Klan. Maybe they were the ones who pushed Jim Crow. And they were the ones who opposed civil rights. That's the fact. And now these cities, many of them, which were Republican a long time ago, become completely Democrat run. And then we see the collapse of minority families. We see the police targeting minority areas, and we see the rise of woke activists claiming these institutions are racist. And I'm like, my, ans- my, my thing to conservatives is, yo, in suburbs and rural areas, I've had great interactions with police. In these cities, yeah, these cops go into lower income and impoverished areas where there tends to be high crime because poverty is correlated with crime, and they engage in policies like stop and frisk. You then get Democrats claiming that it's wrong and they keep voting for Democrats who keep making it happen. That's what I love. I think, you know, uh, one thing we mentioned quite a bit is how the RNC, they had a few black speakers. Uh, Tim Scott, I think is his name. He's a senator from, I think, South Carolina. He's a black man. And they insult him. The Democrats say the Republican Party is the party of white men. And then when they actually have some non-white individuals, those non-white individuals get insulted, berated and smeared. Because the Democrats are racial identitarians, they're racist, and I think our institutions are as well. I really, I, like, I, I, I've talked about it quite a bit too, so it's not like a new thing. But what people need to understand about this idea of like systemic racism or something, it's not that this one FBI agent is a racist or this one cop is a racist. It's that there are just longstanding policies that tend to negatively impact minorities in these cities that are run by Democrats. And that's why I don't understand about why conservatives don't jump on this message. They're like, we got to defend the cops. I'm like, I agree with that. When they go after cops unjustly and they claim that these cops who are actually stopping a crime did something wrong, I'm like, dude, if the cop does something wrong, you hold them accountable. But this is an amazing, amazing attack vector for Republicans. Republicans just need to come out and say, we completely agree with our Black Lives Matter friends. The, the cops in Democrat-run Minneapolis are racist. The cops in Democrat-run New York City are racist. There you go. Use that as your as your talking point. The funny thing is, while Democrat policies lead to these overt complaints of racism and what Democrats themselves say are racist, they accuse the Republicans of being racist. Anyway, getting off on a tangent, the point is going back to what happens in L.A., what we see is out here a sea of white faces fighting with cops, not all of them, but many of them in a Democrat run town complaining about cops Maybe there's something wrong with the people you're electing. Maybe when you go to these conservative areas, you don't see these problems. There was a, there was a, 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 a statistic that came out showing that Democrat run cities tended to have more crime. And some people were like, that's ridiculous. It's a spurious correlation because large cities just happen to be Democrat and large cities will have more crime, period. No, dude, it was per capita, meaning in uh, I think San Diego is a Republican has a Republican mayor, and it, it it is one of the biggest cities in the country, but not one of the top cities for crime. What I think is, I think you've got longstanding racist Democrat policies under the guise of not being racist. They do things they know will be subversive and destructive to minority communities. And that's why you see the autonomous zone in Minneapolis where George Floyd died. Ain't nobody going to come in and help these people. That's why you see Chicago when these stories come out about the tragedies and the gun violence. That's why none of these people are going to come and help them in Chicago. They're going to complain about Republicans. They're going to complain about Donald Trump. And the only time you actually see cops come out and clear something out is when it's offensive to the delicate sensibilities of wealthy white progressives. It's kind of a, a, a it's, it's kind of annoying, actually. Re- Democrats are the real racist, blah, blah, blah. Bro, you guys complain about your own cities over and over and over again. It never stops. Maybe you'll need to look inward and self-reflect on who you're electing and why you're electing them and the policies they're implementing and what they're leading to. Now, I think maybe density plays a role. And maybe the reality is we don't see this kind of stuff in, in other areas because, you know, a lot of rural areas tend to be very predominantly white, perhaps. So we don't know for sure. But if you are coming out and protesting and you're protesting your cops and your mayor and your governor, okay, by all means, go ahead and do it. But you better recognize it's the people you elected. It's your Democratic Party members. And I think the conservatives should recognize this as well. 
the actions taken by the police and what they're being taken for as they're being directed by Democrats. Look, I think the police as individual officers, fine to a certain degree. But shouldn't you be mad at the Democrats running these cities, telling the cops to do these things? Shouldn't you point out how awful Democrat leadership is? I suppose this is just the weird wedge issue. It ain't going to change. I think there's an opportunity, though. Like I said, it's a great attack vector for Republicans to point out that Black Lives Matter ain't protesting Republicans. They're protesting Democrats. Now, OK, in Georgia, for instance, with the voting rights stuff, they're protesting Republicans. But hey, these cities... This is an opportunity for Republicans to be like, here, here, Black Lives Matter. Look at all these problems they're creating. Don't get me wrong. I understand that many Black Lives Matter organizers are Marxists, so Republicans aren't going to agree on that front. But look, there's a couple things to convey, and I'll wrap this one up. Should these people in this park be allowed to gather, be homeless, and just do their thing peacefully? And should we allow this erosion of the First and Second Amendment? Man, honestly, I I, I don't think so. I think if it devolves into an autonomous zone, you got to come in and, and sweep it out. Then the question evolves into, why haven't they done that? Why are they doing it in L.A. to the homeless people, but they're not doing it to the far left extremists in Minneapolis? The more people see the system is broken, the less they're going to have confidence in it. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.